so really I asked, uh, why did we even think about offering this course online? It had been taught as a lecture-based course for a long time. And I guess the, the motivation generally was just yeah, crowds, numbers of students. And um, basically in the department as a whole, in the biology department as a whole, um, you know, really substantial increases in the number of students that we're teaching, uh, looking after, have made us start to think about things a little bit differently. We were already uh, experimenting with different ways to deliver the course. Um, so historically, I've been here for 10 years, which surprises me, but this was the first course that I taught. And I taught it to, in, in one of the uh, Mackenzie Chown lecture halls. Um, and it was to about 100 students, which to me seemed huge at the time. But over just that pretty short period of time, over that decade, it had grown to uh, 250, 350. I think this past cycle, academic cycle, we were at about 350 students. And some of that growth just generally at the university, as we've all experienced, and then some of it's some new programs that for which this course is required. Uh, human physiology is a required component. And those are some high growth programs. So biomedical sciences, um, is jointly taught between uh, medical sciences, health sciences department, and biology. And when I arrived here 10 years ago, it was just a brand new program that we were letting in maybe, I think, five people, five students that first year. And now it's up to about 80, admission of about 80, um, lots and lots of students. The medical sciences program has grown similarly, and both those courses need, both those programs need this course. So um, we were starting already to think about how we were going to change the way we delivered the course. We uh, broke that course up. I mean, there's only so many lecture halls here that are going to accommodate that many students anyway. <clears throat> and beyond that, we really didn't like those really, the classes getting so big. So we started to experiment with breaking it up. We taught it in the summer as a, a lecture-based course. And, uh, and it was around that time that these opportunities to explore online delivery came up. So uh, I guess uh, one maybe interesting point is there is another new program that's about to come on uh, to be available in September of next year, and that's an integrated life sciences program. So again, some students in uh, a program that's maybe not going to require that course, but many of them will take it. <clears throat> so, um, so why else did we do it? Uh, I haven't listed here just the fact that, um, well, I'll get to that later. So, uh, I mean, one other reason that, that really makes us think about these kinds of things, delivery, so the normal pattern had been always to teach it in the winter term, um, but we, um, we always encounter this problem where if, if it's in a, and I'm sure everyone does, uh, a required course in a, in a program, and you've got, especially after first, second year, students are, they're switching programs. There's a, a lot of that kind of thing, which is completely understandable, and I think in, in no way a problem. But it can, it can set students back if we have these inflexible curricula where courses are only offered at certain times. And uh, we also have, you know, some really keen students who uh, just want to get ahead. And so they might want to do it in the summer. That summer course, first time we offered it in the summer, we didn't know how that would go. Uh, before we knew it, we had a hundred and some students uh, registered. They, lo they loved the idea. Um, it, it went really well. <clears throat> Uh, and a lot of those were catch-up students. Sometimes we have, uh, sorry, get-ahead students. So sometimes we have catch-up, there's a failure or just a poor mark and people are coming back at it. But, but probably more so than that, there were students that just wanted to get ahead, uh, which is great. Um, okay, and then in terms of, um, in terms of going online, we're also just thinking about um, experimenting with different styles of learning. So uh, we thought it's nice to uh, generally, um, you know, open things up to uh, students that learn different ways. <clears throat> so the course had over time just sort of naturally evolved towards more and more online present and presence anyway. That's, this is the, uh, the uh, lecture-based course. Um, and that was really just because those things are available. Good, generally good publishers uh, providing the textbooks that we use, uh, and they're 
part of what they do is, is they're constantly developing these online resources and some of them are really good. So we had started to use these and incorporate them. Um, for example, I had incorporated a weekly quiz, uh, online quiz, through the, the publisher's, it was publisher-based material uh, that I selected questions from. Uh, but really, the purpose of that was uh, kind of back to, this is lecture-based course, but back to the idea of motivating students and keeping them, not really towing the line, but keeping them motivated to, tow the line, um, <laughs> to, motivated to keep up with everything I was trying to get them to learn. There's a lot of content in this course. Um, and and I'd, so I'd, I'd done that, and there's an online uh, simulated laboratory program. Uh, very, very, I'm also on the animal care committee here, um, and it, I would say it's all, just about impossible, if not impossible, to uh, do the kinds of physiology laboratories that I would have done when I was an undergraduate. And that's just for reasons of, of the, the way we view the ethical considerations over time. So those laboratories really aren't going to happen often anyway. Um, and what we have instead are, uh, again, publishers have made some pretty good simulated physiology labs where no frogs get injured. And um, so we'd already been using those in the lecture-based course. It, was, it required almost no change to incorporate those into the online course as well. And I always use, extent, make extensive use of Sakai just as a convenience, not just for me, but for the students. So all of the lectures were al already as a, in a PowerPoint format and always uh, uploaded to Sakai. So how? Um, so when the opportunity came along, I think the biggest single component was just having Julia's time um, because I mean, I had no idea how to do it. Um, and so she taught me how to use the, a program called Soft Chalk, where the power, a lot of the PowerPoint material could be translated into uh, this program that allowed substantial annotation and uh, some other things that were useful, and was also amenable to going back and continually editing from year to year, because that's definitely something that is in the plans. Um, and then the other thing that I think was really good was a screencast idea, and I think you just saw that in Dr. Lightstone's um, brief video. Just the idea of taking uh, PowerPoint lectures and talking. So they've got annotations, so they've got the text, but you can also talk the students through. They don't see you. So they're seeing the, the PowerPoint uh, show, and you're telling them what to key on. Um, so those, those were the main uh, methods of delivery. We also did some videos. We prepared some just straight videos. Um, but a lot of those were, were really introductory and explanatory, not so much content delivery. Um, we, I did try to incorporate a lot of um, overlapping content. And I think that was just because I wasn't sure about the way the information would be taken up. So I tried to make the put the same bits of information in lots of different series of slides with a different focus, but coming back at the same ideas again and again. Uh, and one of the biggest changes we had to do was um, the students, so we had students as far away, I, I don't want to tell you Mark's part of the story, but uh, Pakistan, Yukon. Um, so coming in for a midterm exam was out of the question. And so we had to think about, and this is always going to be the case, I think. So we were thinking about how to change the normal format. Lecture basic was always using a, a single midterm, a final, a bunch of other things. And the midterm was converted to an assignment, physiology of disease assignment, which in retrospect, and this is one of the things we'll come back to at the end, uh, I think is much better than uh, the traditional midterm anyway. And considering incorporating into the lecture base course. So I'm going to pass it to Mark now because um, although I set up the course and I've been teaching it for a long time, uh, my teaching pattern changed and I'm now involved in the cell biology course. So at that time, just uh, right as I was finishing that task, Mark came on board to teach the online course. All right, great. Yeah, so as Jeff mentioned, I had the, the privilege of running this course for the first time. Um, and in general, uh, it was very well received by the students, so we got a lot of positive feedback. Um, the students were able to successfully navigate through all of the resources that were online. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about how we, I think, uh, promoted this and, and made it uh, successful. 
Um, and there were very few technical issues throughout the course, and many of them were actually the students not necessarily knowing how to use some of the resources, rather than the actual resources not being um, fully functional at that time. So it was just trying to work with the students to find out what exactly the problem was uh, before it actually hindered their success in the course. In terms of the actual students that we were able to uh, service for this course, it, in comparison to one of the previous uh, in-class undertakings of the course, it was actually quite similar. Uh, the vast majority of students were undergoing Bachelor of Science degrees, uh, followed by Bachelor of Arts, and then a few students uh, in a variety of other different courses um, that were taking the, the Biology 2P97 Human Physiology course as well. Um, this is just interesting. Uh, this is the utilization of Sakai resources. And as you can see, there are peaks uh, at very strategic times throughout the course. Uh, so first day, all the students came on and they wanted to learn about the course, how to use the resources, etc. cetera. Um, and there were actually assignments and quizzes essentially every Monday for the duration of the course, uh, with the exception of the reading week here, uh, where you don't see that blip. So uh, by having the assignments, uh, it really did force the students to come online and, and read the resources that were on Sakai, uh, submit their assignments, and so it kept them motivated throughout the course. And I think by keeping it continuous on a weekly basis, uh, we really did maintain their motivation there. Um, an average of 1.4 visits per day. So um, regardless of the spikes, which obviously are gonna have an impact there, you can see that almost the course of enrollment was about 110. So I mean, almost once, once per day per student, uh, someone was accessing Sakai, which I think is, is pretty good uh, for the first offering of the course. And then you can see the night before the final exam is the, the biggest spike there, so everyone was trying to make sure that they, they knew their material for the following day. In terms of the actual um, evaluations of the students, uh, we had a very similar sort of distribution of, of marks, or qu quite a similar distribution of marks. Um, as was mentioned earlier though, there were some students that actually, uh, more students that didn't do quite as well in the course. Uh, so there were three students in the online undertaking of this course uh, that essentially did absolutely nothing. Didn't hand in a single assignment, uh, write a test or anything. So if we actually remove those three students, the average of the course becomes approximately the, the same as that of the in-class lecture-based course. So some of the lessons that, that, um, that we learned through the first online delivery of this course was that it really does pay off to spend some extra time at the beginning uh, explaining how the course operates to the students. So what are the forms of evaluations? Uh, so not only did we include them in the syllabus, which we tried to beef up and have uh, quite a bit more information in there, uh, but we also shot a brief introductory video outlining what those actual evaluations were um, and how it would operate. And we also shot an additional video uh, explaining how to access all the resources for the course. So I felt that the students that did watch those videos, they knew how to uh, access the resources and they did very well in the course. And the students that didn't, I would point them in the right direction and, and try to communicate with them so then that way um, they did learn uh, maybe you know a week after, but, uh, but we, we did get to them as well. Um, as Jeff mentioned, the online delivery did enable students that may travel home for the summer uh, to be able to actually take some of the courses to catch up or to get ahead. Um, and so we did have some students in uh, Pakistan and Yukon that were able to successfully uh, complete the course and, uh, and they did quite well. Um, I tried to include some live Blackboard Collaborate sessions um, to have some online af office hours for students that may not be able to actually make it into campus. So I did have some, some office hours um, that were live so they'd come to my office um, and some students did show up but they weren't uh, extremely popular. And then with respect to the actual ba Blackboard Collaborate sessions, um, I didn't really have very much success. And I tried to actually include some lecture t style material for students that did come. Um, and I recorded them. So students would actually watch the recordings, but they wouldn't necessarily come for the live sessions. So in the future, um, what I'm trying to do now with the second delivery of the course is actually record brief videos on important topics and upload those to Sakai to try and engage the students that um, may enjoy just hearing someone talk about the information rather than you know, reading it entirely online. So uh, I'll just say, I, I think we're over time here, sorry, but uh, really quickly, a couple uh, points. <clears throat> that experience doing the online course has actually been really, so, so we haven't abandoned the lecture-based course. Uh, the pattern is likely to be winter term lecture-based course, in the summer an online course offered. It's kind of been all, all over the place right now, but that's what we see, which I think it will serve the students best as they go home, uh, that kind of thing. It is primarily Brock students taking this right now. 
and whether that changes in the future is an open question. Uh, but, but doing that online course has actually really changed the way we see delivering the lecture-based course as well. And we're really thinking about um, moving towards a more of a hybrid style in the lecture-based course. Uh, keeping weekly meetings, but keeping a lot of the content that we've shifted online with all of the resources to explain the content and integrate it, uh, offer those to the lecture-based students, um, but also offer that weekly appearance or bi-weekly appearance. It's usually two times one and a half hours. We're, and hope, the hope is that by doing it that way, we'll be able to have more meaningful discussions in class. Now, the, the, the quiz whip and other things are, are likely to be important there, but that's really the goal. And, and I think the doing that online uh, exercise has really helped the whole uh, enterprise. Uh, so, uh, and, I mean, this is a little bit different, but we, we're, you know, we're, we're also experimenting or experimenting with laboratories. So we're, we're thinking about different ways to give them a physical laboratory experience. So we've been looking, and this is for online students specifically. Um, the ones here in lecture, of course, we've got some extra space on campus. We're going to use it to put labs into the lecture-based course. Online, we're looking at um, inexpensive packages of equipment that can be used by, by these students, wherever they may be, to monitor heart rate, blood pressure, uh, body temperature, a few other simple uh, variables, and, and collect data and, and have real labs. So they, these things would be shipped out to them. And um, that's, that's an idea that we have. I think it'd be really cool, actually, if we can make that happen. And via the use of eBay, it might be possible, because some of those things are really, really cheap now. Uh, thank you.